You are listening to Hayes' Hard Drive, and joining me this evening from Amarillo, Texas, is singer, songwriter, Zach Wilkerson. Welcome, brother. It is wonderful to have you on the show. How are you? I'm great, Delane. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. Thank you for taking the time out. I know you're you're a busy guy playing shows, and it's it's uh, it's great for you to be able to take that time out to to talk with us. So so thanks so oh, much. Man. Thank you for having me. Thanks for thinking of me. Absolutely. So you you have, from what I've read, a very interesting story, and I want you to share that about how you began this journey, actually getting into the music business. It sounds as yeah. though it sounded uh, to me as that you were challenged to enter into something and from this began this career. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> well, it wasn't it wasn't so much of a challenge as more just straight trickery. <laughs> um, a friend of mine from Amarillo, a guy named Casey Berry, he, uh, he's, he owns now and runs a venue there called Hoots, but he heard some of my original songs and he, well, he encouraged me to come play this uh, open mic in Lubbock, Texas. In Lubbock, there's a venue called the Blue Light and they've got a very long and strong tradition of songwriter open mics on Monday. And so he said, yeah, let's go play this open mic. You know, it's no pressure, no big deal. It's, he said, you know, I just, he said, I just want you to play your songs and I think it'd be good for you. I said, sure, man, you know, let's, let's try it, you know, and I, cause I was just, this was, uh, this would have been fall of 2011 and I had just kind of decided right about that time to start playing my own, my own songs. I'd played in a few other bands and did kind of the cover band thing and, uh, country bands and things like that. And, but I'd never really played just my songs. And so you know, I decided to do, to do that, and then he said, let's go do this open mic. And, you know, it's it's about a two-hour drive from Amarillo to Lubbock. So he offered to buy my breakfast and drive me and buy me a few beers while I was there. So I said, yeah, let's do it. So we drove down to Lubbock, and uh, when I got there, it was one of the uh, qualifying rounds for their for their songwriter contest that they have every year. And uh, if you win the songwriter contest, you play at a festival called Larry Joe Taylor's, which boasts about, you know, anywhere between 30 and 45 or 50,000 people every year. And uh, so I ended up winning the fest or winning the songwriter contest and then playing an acoustic set at the festival in April 2012. And then by September 2012, I had. I was quitting my job to just play my songs full time. What were you doing at the time? What job were you working before <laughs> before all of this? Well, I was a I was a worship pastor for over a decade. I um I did a lot of uh just well, I call it rock and roll church, you know. They allowed me to play electric guitar and we had real drums and you know, we kind of threw down every every Sunday and Saturday night, but uh, the you know probably the biggest part of my job was the music, but uh, uh, I also did a lot of just uh, teaching young kids how to play instruments and be in a band. I, I guess you could call it like school of rock, but with church songs. That's right. So we I did we that call for it for a long, long time. We call it contemporary contemporary yeah, church contemporary. here here in they here in North Carolina. Me. Yeah, in the in the South here, that's that's contemporary. You know, you have. Your two different services. You have the traditional, and then you have oh, yeah. the contemporary. And and you were you were leading the pack of of awesome rock church music, man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I was, and it's funny because I'd been doing that for years. Like I said, I was a worship pastor for over a decade, and in several churches, that's what I did. Was I was the the you know <laughs> the young wild man that came in and started playing electric guitar on Sunday morning. I did that for. Honestly, three or four churches helped them break into the contemporary and rock and roll worship scene uh, out of you know out of a trend uh, a traditional setting. So I've been doing that a long time, and then when the opportunity came to play just original music, 
I couldn't pass that up. Absolutely. And I, I know that since the age of four in, in the church yeah. as well, you've you've been involved in music, you know, age of what, 12 or so, you were you were not only playing a musical instrument, you were playing multiple musical instruments. Yeah. And yeah, what that's true. What, what do you think? You know, where where was the the spawn for the desire and love for music because it it didn't just start. It's been your whole life. Where 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 would you say you could trace that back to? Is there an origin for that? Man, I don't know. I mean, my dad was my dad uh, was really involved in, in music. He was a he's a fantastic singer. Um, you know, he taught me my first handful of guitar chords and things like that. But I mean, uh. And I guess really that's more about him encouraging it and, you know, him and my mom making sure I had opportunities and things. But I, you know, I honestly don't know. I just, I just know that my entire life music has always made sense to me. You know, it makes more sense than just about anything else. And it's been that way since I was really little. Um, you know, I, my parents tell stories of me being able to read music before I could read words. Just, just, I just picked it up, you know, and it all, you know, it all just makes sense. And so from a very young age, I just gravitated towards it, you know, just things on the radio, my folks music, be it records or whatever. I just always, I don't know when I hear it, it makes sense. I understand it. I understand. I know what's going on. And, you know, uh, even from tiny, I, I could either, you know, I could, I felt like I could either replicate or improve on what I was hearing. You know, on, on top of that, on top of just being a very talented musician and you have the ability to also write wonderful music, you're a talented songwriter. What is, what is your formula if if you have one for writing such wonderful music and being able to create such passionate lyrics for your your songs man you know i don't know you know I'm, i i try to keep the formula very open i try to keep my songwriting process really wide open i don't want to put it in a box or any type of you know any type of uh system or or uh, anything that could kind of type down if that makes sense like a perfect example is the song Cruel off of Dust Bowl Soul. Um, that song, um, it came to me just, I mean, really just in a moment. I was in my garage. I was working on some stuff that's not even remu not even remotely music related. And that song just kind of fell in my lap. You know, it just kind of started playing in my head. And when I wrote that song, I didn't have, you know, I didn't have a guitar in my hands or uh, anything like that. And so I, I really just started singing it. I just started singing the song into, you know, an empty room, recorded it. I record a lot of my stuff on voice memo. And then I, you know, I go back again and listen and, and try to work from there. But that song particularly, like, like I say, there's really no process. Uh, for me, really the only process is capturing the song, you know, as it kind of, floats by if that makes sense i i i don't um i don't hold myself to writing on acoustic guitar or electric guitar or piano or acapella i just uh i try to be receptive i guess that's the best way to put it i try to just be as open as possible to let whatever song's gonna find me find me and just be open to it and be welcoming and you know be a good steward of the opportunity i guess Zach's most recent album is entitled, as he just said, Dust Bowl Soul. And this song depicts a failing love. It's called Love Me Like You're Losing Me. This is Delane Hayes, and we'll be back with more Hayes' Hard Drive. Mm -hmm. Love me like you're losing If you had to, you choose me. I'll pretend that you're not using me. Love me like you're 
losing me Oh, you're losing me Cause you don't talk to me When the house finally settles down Always busy with some little something Always busy running around I don't like what I've been thinking And I don't dare say it out loud Love me like you're losing me Like if you had to, you choose me I'll pretend that you're not using me Love me like you're losing me Oh Think love just says yes You trimmed it down to want and need You can't see ours is a mess Maybe you're afraid to see And I don't like what I've been thinking No, I don't dare say it out loud Oh, no, no Talking with the talented Zach Wilkerson here on Hayes's Hard Drive this evening, discussing his journey into music and his diversity as a musician and songwriter. So, Zach, in the 2014 release of your first album, it's a self titled album, you came out swinging for the fences. Uh, uh, this was a wonderfully well written album. Did you already have material for this album prepared, ready, or did you have to go back and write for it? Uh, no, I, I mean, I had a lot of the songs um, for a long time, actually. I was one of those, I was kind of a closet songwriter. I started writing songs in uh, 1992. That's when I got my first guitar. 
and it just kind of it just happened like as soon as i got the guitar and a few few chords in my pocket it just the songwriting just immediately started flowing from there and so some of the songs that are on even the first record are pretty old uh pieces you know in 2014 when we recorded it pieces was probably six seven years old um four lane highway was at least a couple years old i don't um like i said i just wrote for years and years i never really thought i would have a venue or a stage to you know to sing my own songs i was doing so much church music and and uh i just kind of thought well i'm just gonna keep writing you know and uh I don't, and and to be honest with you, so many times, the only reason I wrote was just for uh, therapy. <laughs> it's cheaper than going to absolutely a it is psychiatrist. So, I would just write a song in order to work something out, and I did it for years and years, and thought no one would ever hear songs like "Pieces" is a perfect example. When I wrote "Pieces," it was one of the songs that I assumed would just live in a notebook for the rest of my life, and no one would ever know it or hear it. And then uh, my friend Walt Wilkins, who produced, you know, my first two records, uh, when he heard pieces, he said, "Yeah, I mean, we definitely gotta, you know, we gotta get that song out." So it's I, funny. I just, uh, I, you know, I didn't really write. I've never really written anything specifically for a record. I just write constantly, and then uh, we find anytime it's time to make a new record, I just kind of. Uh, cherry pick out of the list of songs I have and try to find something I think will go well for that particular project. It's funny that you mentioned those two songs because um, before we came on the air, we had talked about pieces and four yeah. lane highway and how I, I, I associated them with, with Zach Brown and how other songs. And, and we talked about this as well. Uh, I, you know, middle of the night reminds me of, Leroy Parnell, as well as some of the other songs on that album, and you shared a very interesting story about <laughs> Leroy. Well, uh, like I said, we we play this festival in the Panhandle of Texas every year called Bison Fest. It's for the Texas State Bison Herd at Caprock Canyon State Park, and uh, I think we've played it six or seven years in a row now. I honestly have lost count, but. A couple of years ago, Leroy Parnell was our headliner, and uh, apparently his band was tied up, and so he was, you know, he was scheduled for a show and didn't have a band to back him up. And about th two, three weeks before the festival, I got a phone call from a Nashville phone number, and I didn't answer it because <laughs> I thought there's no one in Nashville I really want to really talk to. We've all we've all done that. <laughs> we've all done that. We see we see a number when like. And that's that's a tele that's a telemarketer, you know, it's right? Really easy to just to, just to send it to voicemail, <laughs> but uh, I saw the six one five number and I thought, who could that be? And they left a voicemail and it, and and I was actually at my uh, at my bass player at the time. I was at his house. We were doing some just non related music stuff, and and uh, so I checked my voicemail and it was from Leroy. Leroy Parnell and uh, long story short, we we're playing the festival together and his band couldn't make it. And he'd heard my record and thought, man, let's get this guy to play. And so he, my band was his backing band for the festival that day. We played our set, you know, my band played our set a little bit earlier in the day. And then we left the festival, went to the little cabin that Leroy was staying in. We did a, quick rehearsal ran through some things and then that night we we got to be Leroy's backing band which was I'll be honest with you was pretty huge for a kid you know I was born in 1980 so you know all the 90s country and stuff that's that's right in my wheelhouse that's that's right where I was living at the time so you know 12 13 year old me was freaking out Absolutely. when I was playing on stage with Leroy Parnell yeah, you you remember picking up that that guitar and playing that music back in back in the uh, mid '90s of Leroy's, and now all of a sudden, instead of picking it up in your room or in your basement at your home where nobody else is listening, you're on a stage literally right behind the man singing the songs. Yeah, it was it was insane. Honestly, it was one of those. There's a lot of nights 
you know, I've been doing this full time for, you know, right at 11, right at 11, not, not 11, but right at eight years. I started in 2011, but uh, there's been several nights where you stop and you realize, oh my gosh, this is why people give their entire life to music. And that was definitely one of those nights, man. It was definitely was. Your second album that we've mentioned and also played a song already from Dust Bowl Soul. What a great album title. Debuted <laughs> uh, two years later in 2016. And, and to me, this album exudes just heartache, love loss. It, it's the just phenomenal. I can feel your heart just coming through in this album. Was there was there personal inspiration for the album, or as we discussed earlier about your writing, was it that you know these songs just came by and and you were open to receiving the music? Well, with songwriting, you know, specifically, I think one of the most important things you have to do is listen well. You know, listen as a discipline, and. You know, Love Me Like You're Losing Me, specifically, you know, I've been married 17 years this year. Um, I'm very just blessed and fortunate to have a wife and three kids who are behind me 100% and just push me and help me keep going. But, um, you know, being married 17 years, uh, my wife and I, you know, we know a a few couples who didn't make it as long as us. And uh, Love Me Like You're Losing Me really came from a conversation we had with um, a friend of ours who was just expressing, you know, the hurt and the pain that happens when the marriage doesn't make it. And uh, at one point she had – she actually said, I just wish I would have known that I was losing him and I would have loved him differently. I would have loved him that way. And that really stuck with me, you know, not just not just because that's such a poetic thing to say, but also because, like I said, I've been married long enough to understand exactly what she was saying. And so it really hit home and it's, you know, stuck in my head for a couple of weeks. And then finally, it just uh, finally made its way out into a song. But that's I mean, honestly, that's really where that comes from is just listening, listening to not only the words that people say, but, you know, really listening to what people are feeling, listening to uh, their life experiences. You know, one of the lines in that song that really touches me, and, and it's and, and sometimes it could get lost, I think, but it, it really puts me in that situation that you just talked about. And when, when, they're communi- when you're communicating, I don't like what I'm thinking. You yeah. know, how, how exactly. that's powerful. You know, we don't want to admit what we're thinking, right. but you know, I just don't like these thoughts that are going through my head. And you know, that touches people on a personal level. It's, it's an, it's an art. And when you say something like that, all of a sudden people are like, man, that's me. That's me. I can see myself in this song. And right. that, that's, that's just that album really does that. And, and it's not just that song. It's, um, it, you know, there's other songs within there. cruel. There's, there's plenty of other songs in there that are songs that, that really speak to people's hearts. And, and I think you did such a great job with that album and kind of piggybacking off of that. Are there any plans for a new album? Absolutely. Um, Actually, today what I've been doing is listening to uh, mixes on a new record. I just made a new record in November. I took my uh, road band into the studio in uh, in Wimberley, Texas at Yellow Dog Studio with a gentleman named Adam Oder. And uh, we uh, spent four days in the studio and laid down 12 tracks and... Uh, It'll be out sometime this year. We're not really sure when. You know, the process the process is slow if you do it correctly. Um, my first two records, I never really did a proper uh, promotion or release. I really just made the records and then kind of just kind of just released them on the world. Didn't really 
give the records or the songs, you know, kind of the fighting chance that they need. Now, now but a much try, wiser Zach, right? Uh, a much wiser Zach in, 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 uh, from 2014 to 2019 in terms of putting out new music. Well, I don't know if it's wiser. It's <laughs> just, uh, you know, honestly, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Delane, to be quite honest with you, when I decided to, to do this, when I decided to try this full time in 2012, I fully expected to, to give it, you know, 12 months, 15 months, maybe, and for everything to just kind of peter out. And so those when I when I put those first two records out, it was almost in a sense of um, uh, what's the word, you know, case or all. Maybe that's the best way to put it out. Whatever will be, will be. A very very blasé and, type of, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, right. I, and I just, I've always, ex- I, I guess I've just always expected, man, the this music world is so fickle and it's so volatile. And I just kind of always expected, well, you know, if I don't make it, it's okay. I'm going to try. But now here we are, like I said, seven years, eight years in, and I realize, oh my goodness, we've actually got something to work with here. It's time to... uh Time to maybe uh, give the songs and give the music a better chance than just, you know, spitting it out and then playing as many shows as we can fit in. Zach, thanks so much for stopping by and, and chatting with me. And we are going to make sure that we keep our eyes peeled for this new album. You can follow Zach on Facebook and Instagram at Zach, Z-A-C, Wilkerson Music. On Twitter, you can find him at Zach underscore Wilkerson, or by going to his website, www.zachwilkersonmusic.com. You can also check his music out on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, YouTube. There's videos there. You can also go to hazesharddrive.com and find links to purchase Zach's music from there as well. So many different avenues to do that. This is the first song off his self-titled debut album. It's middle of the night. Oh, baby, do you ever think about me in the middle of the night? When he's holding you tight. Cause, baby, I've been lonely and I wonder if you'll ever lonely too. Are you ever feeling blue? I'm so lonely in this world all by myself My love is so lonely, I don't want nobody else Baby, do you ever think about me in the middle of the night? Oh baby, when he gives you love, does he give you love the way? Tell me, is he ever cruel? You know that I loved you like no other Could love you ever again So love me like you did back then 